Biden, how is his apparent dementia not a real, real issue, given as horrible as, as Trump, as you see Trump to be? But, but, mo but most importantly, the question I'd love to hear answered is that instead of you debating all of these lame socialists that you just seem to walk all over and, and it's just, you know, easy, easy fruit low-hanging fruit yeah. why wouldn't you why don't have a, a debate with the real objectives who disagree with you about trump you know if if andy or somebody like that wants to wants to debate i don't know any real objectivists who disagree with me about trump who would want to debate me i mean uh, and and who, who who's the audience for that debate so this is the real answer who's the audience for that debate who cares if objectivists disagree about Trump. See, my goal is not to convince objectivists to agree with me. I mean, that's, I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I don't really, I mean, you do disagree with me about Trump, for example. So what, you know, good. But we agree on, on fundamental stuff. My goal is to convince people who are not objectivists about objectivism. And, and, and me talking about Trump is one way to get to non-objectivism to, to come in. So most of what I do in life and most of what I want to do in life is not about objectivists. You know, you've read all of Ayn Rand, you've got all the facts, you've got everything. We both have those, we disagree on them. I'm quite happy for me and you to say, we agree to disagree. And the fact is that the objectivist movement is not big enough to be to change the election. So my position on Trump doesn't matter existentially for anything, right? So my focus is on getting new people into the movement and on taking People who haven't read everything, who don't who don't consider themselves yet objectivists or are and are relatively young at it, and try to get them to be deeper understanders of the object of the of the of the philosophy. But I don't, and even there, I don't do or I don't take them all the way because I'm not a philosopher. So um, my orientation is towards them. I mean, I was thinking you were going to ask why not debate um, a conservative Trump supporter, and I would love to. I mean, I do it tomorrow and conservatives are the ones who resist debating me. They don't want to debate me, but I would love to debate a, a kind of right wing because my, my whole purpose in life is to differentiate objectivism from everybody else. I, so I will debate, I, hard to believe it, I even debated an anarchist once, right? I want to, I'll debate libertarians, I'll, some libertarians, I'll debate uh, leftists, I'll debate um, conservatives, I'll debate people across the spectrum unless they're completely nuts, I'll debate them. The one, the one group of people I'm not interested really in debating, I don't find it that stimulating, and I don't see the purpose in it, is objectivists. Because if we agree on almost everything and our disagreements on Trump, who cares? I don't care. So, so here we are with the, again, low-hanging fruit, a Trump supporter. I'm sure you would absolutely stomp all over a Trump supporter. The point I made earlier about great drama being you know the good guy versus the good guy who are and there's general confusion over over what really is you which way do you go with that i think especially a show like this is is it everybody's an objective is pretty much listening to this show right now pretty i can no, imagine everybody I, I don't think that's true and i don't think that's true i, I you know i think there's a, a lot of people who are new to objectivism are listening to the show Right, uh, but, but I have a serious interest in, in objectivism. And for the most part, you're not going to find much disagreement. So you're going to, we're all going to agree. And, and if we, you know, so then what, uh, what are we left with? Just, I don't know, two, know, what, thousand what, people, two to what, 5,000 people listen to every one of these shows. They might find something interesting in it. Otherwise, well, do it. But, but wouldn't there, but, but I, I guess it's maybe, maybe it's just me personally. I know it is. Wondering, because really there are, there are objectivists out there who are, I don't know, you'd say, pro-Trump, but would certainly never vote for Biden over Trump. And, and, and an issue like that, that's, that's everything else we're going to agree on. We're going to agree on metaphysics, we're going to agree on epistemology, but when it gets to politics, which is really so important, and it is, it is you can't turn on the news without it, how is that not, number one, topical, and then number two, raise some very interesting questions in people's minds? I think people have, uh, could learn a lot about the like Alex talking about energy policy in relation to any Democrat being being elected. But Alex will... wouldn't debate me on Trump. I would bet anything, I would bet all my wealth, which is less than yours, but I'd still bet it, that yeah. Alex wouldn't debate me and take the pro-Trump position. And the, this is the thing. 
Um, well, maybe it's energy. Maybe you're just discussing energy policy. But, we agree. but we'll agree on that. Well, Trump's energy policy is much better than Biden's. I mean, there's no question. Where's the disagreement, right? Um, that's not that 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 is not the issue. On, on issue by issue, I, I mean, there's some issues that will, where objectivists or people who call themselves objectivists disagree. You know, the issue of trade. Maybe there's some issue people who disagree. Certainly on the issue of immigration, there's a lot of disagreement. And I've debated, I debated Leonard Peikoff on immigration. There's, there's, uh, there's other issues in which objectivists disagree, but they're not that many. The evaluation of Trump, the evaluation of the presidency of the United States, I, I just, I don't think, I don't think it warrants a debate. I mean, my view is, I've said everything I've got to say about this. I've said it many, many times over many, many forums, many, many formats. You're either convinced or you're not. A debate's not going to change that fact. I don't hold it against you in any kind of serious sense that you, you want to vote for Trump. I'll vote. You see, this is where we disagree, I think, Robbie. And this is why you fight, you're so offended by the fact that I didn't vote. I don't think it's that important. Because the fact is your vote doesn't matter. And my vote doesn't matter. It, if my vote was the absolutely deciding vote in an election, maybe I'd care. But my vote is not the deciding vote in the election. Certainly not in California and yours in Texas. Yeah, probably not. Right, we so, have to take a long view. So I don't, I don't, I don't view um, voting as important. And it, 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 it's, it's more important to you in terms of your own integrity that you did what you think was the right thing versus existentially out there having an impact on the world. So my view is if we disagree about voting, Fine. Then, then each one does what they want. Now, again, if objectivism was the balancing vote, right? If I, in my statement on my show, would determine the fate of the presidency in the future, right? There were so many objectivists that we would be the swing vote. Then I agree with you. Then I would have a debate. Then the debate makes absolute sense. But Perhaps right it's now, not a debate. Perhaps it's a, it's a discussion. It could be a discussion. Yeah, yeah it could be a discussion. Many times. <laughs> but, but, but is it energy... It powers everything. How is how would I know you for all Trump's foils and his arrogance and braggadociousness and all the things you hate him for that I find completely irrelevant to to see, running the country. Is where, this is where we disagree. Oh, there we go. I think those are the things that are important, and I think that the particulars of energy policy not that important. I mean, Obama, Obama, if he'd had four more years. We still would have electricity in our homes. It might be a little bit more expensive, but it, we'd still have electricity in our homes. Indeed, even if Bernie Sanders was elected tomorrow, uh, he wouldn't actually implement the Green New Deal. It wouldn't be implemented. It wouldn't pass Congress. It, so we'd still have electricity in four years. It would be worse. It would be more expensive. But it's not any one of these elections is not like any one policy issue is going to wipe us out. Uh, you know, we, we've survived Obamacare. We were told we couldn't survive Obamacare. We were all going to die. We survived it. Now, again, it's worse than it was. It's better if there hadn't been Obamacare. But we survived it. And, you know, but Trump is changing what the presidency means. He's changing what America means. He's ch and that, I don't think we can survive. I think any particular policy we can survive. But fundamentally changing the balance of power and the approach to power and the approach to what America is, that is so deep and will, ch and I think has already in the, in the four years, has already, I mean, think about, I mean, I cannot imagine an epidemic becoming politicized eight years ago, 20, 20 years ago. It's just unthinkable. And what has happened in the last four years, just our attitude towards something as scientifically simple and straightforward as a virus, and I, and I blame Trump for this. I, I think the left is responsible as well, but I, but primarily I blame Trump. For this. Everything in America today is politicized. Everything, whether the sun rises in the West, is a is a political question. It, it's it does it you know rises in the East. There you go. Um, it, it, it's and and that is the this part of the great damage that he has done to the psyche of America and and. And maybe we were heading there anyway, and it didn't matter who president was, but he, he is the guy who's kind of pushed us over the edge. And, and so uh, uh, this Biden, this, <laughs> this guy that can't put Biden sentences together, what's yeah. he going to do to the presidency? Yeah, nothing. 
he's going to be a nothing and, and he's going to do very little. And he's going to surround himself with, you know, semi-competent people, just like any other president has. And things are going to run OK. And hopefully there'll be enough Republicans in the Senate to block most of what he wants to do. That's really horrific and bad. And things will deteriorate a little bit on the margins. And we will continue to fight so that in 4, 8, 12, 16, 20 years, we still have a country. But I don't know what happens if, if, if Trump and that mentality, I think, for example, I think Trump has destroyed the Republican Party. What, what that means is there's no opposition party anymore. There's, no, there's, nobody when, when, there's nobody to oppose the left when it wants to do certain things. That, that, the whole opposition has, is gone. And that is Trump. Now, we will pay for that in 4, 8, 12, 16, 20 years. And if Hillary had won, there'd be a robust Republican pro-free market opposition. The, the, this, this uh, uh, what do they call it, conservative nationalism and this uh, new right and all the different variations of new right the one group in the Republican Party that has been eviscerated by Trump, eliminated, doesn't exist, is the pro-free market group within the Republican Party. It's gone. And the Republicans will say that. There is nobody in the Republican Party today in any position of power or prominence who is pro-free market. And to devastate the Republican Party in that sense, in that way, is going to have consequences that are far worse than having four years of, of, of Hillary or four years of Biden. You don't think the, uh, the lockdown under a Hillary or a Biden presidency no. would be a whole lot worse? No, than I Trump? think it would have been less worse. I, I'm, I'm, in, te I'm in Texas. Uh, all, all my sure. gyms are open, thriving. Things are going extraordinarily well here in Texas. No, it's great. But I don't think that has anything to do I don't think the lockdowns would have happened the way they happened if not for the fact that Trump was president. The fact that in the first 45 days, Trump, in his you know, blind, evasive arrogance, ignored the threat completely. I think somebody, even like Hillary or Biden, would have been much more respectful of the experts who were not advocating shutdowns. There is no document in the government that says that the way you deal with a pandemic is shutdown. The way you deal with a pandemic is test, uh, track, isolate. And the fact that from January, middle of January, until the middle of March, we did almost no testing, certainly no tracking, very little isolation, made the situation such that New York had no option but to shut down. And then everybody copied them because there was no leadership. There was nothing counting. Kind of, kind of, and indeed, uh, uh, I remember, I remember, I mean, people can forget this, but I don't, that when de Blasio didn't want to shut down New York, it was Trump harassing him to shut down New York. So Trump has, has, has taken a position uh, completely contradictory from week to week. Uh, you know, he criticized the Georgia guy for opening up too soon, right? What, what was that about? I, you know, and, and I'm not making this up. I heard Trump say it. I wasn't reading it in the New York Times. Um, so Trump has been all over the place. He has, the extent of his poor leadership here is so devastating. But, it, but the key was that early on, he didn't listen to the scientists because that's who Trump is. He doesn't listen to people who know what they're talking about. I don't think that would have happened under any other president that I can think of. Just well, I think we need to consider that we have a culture that was ready for lockdowns. I think that's more scary than who's in office. I, I think that's also true, but I don't think the lockdowns were inevitable. I really don't. And I think, I think they could have been yeah. prevented. Maybe New York needs to be locked down. I'm not even convinced of that. If they had done what was basically needed to be do, do what, the, what lots of other countries, what a few countries did. So it looks like there's incompetence across the board. But the, 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 the countries that did it well, did it well. Uh, and look, the, the lockdowns are not a political issue in England where the conservatives dominate politics. They still did a lockdown. They, Germany did a lockdown. France did a lockdown. Everybody did a lockdown, left or right. Uh, the only countries that didn't do a lockdown were the countries that paid attention to the scientists, that paid attention to how you deal with pandemics, which are South Korea, Taiwan, Singapore, and Hong Kong. That's it. Everybody else screwed it up. Even Sweden, which didn't do a lockdown but didn't do testing, has screwed it up. So it's, it's, it's you know, 
And everybody looks to America for leadership. This is the thing that when you screw up as president of the United States, you're screwing up more than just the United States. You screw up the world. So, I, you know, I don't know. I, I, you know, I, 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 I'm not convincing, obviously, to some people. <laughs> to you, Robbie. Uh, and, and <laughs> I, to I'd be others. one of them. I, I know to many others. Well, test and you know, the testing and tracing in a, in a country of 330 million is a little bit hard, different. Not hard to do at all. Not Before hard. The outbreak was in Seattle. They could have done it easily then in Cal Northern California, then gone to Then as soon as it came out in New York, they could have done it in New York. It's not that hard to do. It's not an issue of size. Korea has a smaller population, but also uh, smaller resources, less resources than we do. We're the richest country in the world that we can't. And the CDC theoretically had the plan. The fact that the whole Trump mentality is what causes, if you remember, I mean, again, early on, the, the, the World Health Organization offered, offered the United States one of their tests, a test that had been proven it worked in South Korea and Taiwan and these other places. And the Trump administration said, no, we need an American-made test. And the CDC made an American-made test, which allowed it up to be completely faulty. And that took us back at least four weeks. It's the whole mentality of Trump that's anti-science, anti other anti, you know, uh, 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 you know, anti, you know, authoritarian top down that made this. I mean, other countries that should be more authoritarian than us got the business community involved in testing earlier than we do. Got tests out there, uh, got a variety of different tests, but didn't turn down a perfectly good test because it came from a foreign country. Who cares where it comes from as long as it works? So. No, there is a whole mentality that a Trump administration has that's inculcated into government, that is absorbed into the bureaucracy, that has that, that the coronavirus brought out the complete and utter incompetence. And, and, and it happened. I see it in foreign policy and the way they do foreign policy. Even the better people within the State Department are pathetic because they can't do their job because the, Trump, the way the Trump administration approaches these issues. You see it in every field. Now, Yes, he has the right approach, basically, because he leaves it alone in energy and a few other places. But all this other stuff is far more damaging in a long run perspective. And it's, again, what he's done to the Republican Party, we will not recover from for, for, for many, 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 many years, because for many, many years, we will not have a proper opposition to the Democrats and they'll steamroll over us. And his opposition to the Democrats is about is what it's not it's not ideological it's not about markets it's it's about you know it's about name calling and and sleepy joe it's, it's, it's about, it's sleepy about joe. nationalism and statism so you know he doesn't disagree with them on anything fundamental so no I, I i really think he has made this country much worse off in ways now it's true in four years when things suck and there's been a democratic president i will be saying See, this is what happened because of what Trump does, did. The Republicans couldn't stand up to this guy. And, they, and, and you'll say, and others will say, no, it's because we elected Biden. If only Trump were president, things would be much better. No, no, and no. I don't have I, a parallel I, universe to prove it. Yeah, well, I, I certainly believe Trump is in for another four years, which gives you another four years of grief. You go. I, I'd you hate go. to see. No debate. Uh, we'll have another four years of my grief. Look, the, 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 the fun part is, then no matter who gets elected, I'm going to have four years of grief. It's not like I'm going to celebrate that Biden gets elected. I'm going to be miserable when Biden gets elected. And then I'm going to start riling against Biden. And, and that'll be four years of me going after everything, everything Biden does. My job never ends in terms of being anti whoever's in the White House. I mean, I did this when Bush was in the White House. And I don't you know if you remember this, but I voted for John Kerry in 2004. And I'm proud of that vote and desperately, desperately wish that John Kerry had won in 2004. But it didn't work out like that, that way. So, so the, the financial crisis got blamed on the Republicans. It got blamed on the capitalism. got blamed on, uh, you know, good stuff. And the Democrats won and we got Obama. And Obama's eight disastrous hobble years led us to Trump. And it all could have been different if only John Kerry had won in 2004. Well, I guess you were wrong then. And I definitely believe you're wrong now. Yes. And uh, let's do one of those food. I know you're a big foodie. So let's have, while we've got, while we've got so many witnesses, uh, let's have a, a meal of our choice in, in the city of our choice. 
uh, in the in the United States uh, on the on the result of the election. I don't know who's going to win. I'm not saying Biden's going to win. I, you know, I I do think I do think this. I think that the Republicans will lose the House. Yeah, and well, they already lost the House. So they already lost the House. They, 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 they won't gain the House, even if Trump wins. I think they won't gain the House. And I think there's a significantly better than 50% chance that they lose the Senate. So that is a bet, or that's not a bet? No, I, I, I don't have an opinion who's going to win the election. I don't know. I, I you know, I, I wish I knew. I wish I had a view. And maybe in a month I'll have a view. And put it this way as soon as I have a clear view on who's going to win the election, I'll take you up on the bet if I disagree with you. <laughs> all right. I look forward to it. And again, thanks. Happy, happy birthday. I hate to bring you, I hate to bring you all this, no, this anxiety the day after your birthday, but no, happy, anxiety. happy birthday. It's always fun. It's always and, uh, what we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think. Meaning, any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brutes. Using the super chat, and I noticed yesterday when I appealed for uh, support for the show, many of you stepped forward and actually uh, supported the show for the first time, so I'll do it again. Maybe we'll get some more today. Um, if you like what you're hearing, if you appreciate what I'm doing, then I appreciate your support. Uh, those of you who don't yet support the show, please take this opportunity. Go to youronbrookshow.com slash support or go to subscribestar.com, Show, and, um, and, and make a kind of a monthly contribution uh, to, keep this, uh, to keep this going. I'm not sure when the next...